Okay, this video is going to give you a look at the Loft tool in Fusion 360. Loft is one of our 3D modeling tools that we can use to create solids, um, and it's kind of a kind of a special use thing. We don't use Loft that often, but um, sometimes it's just the right thing for the job. So um, what Loft allows us to do is to create a solid, generate a solid between two profiles that are sketched out on parallel planes. So um, I will create my first profile on the origin plane. And let's just call it uh, 4 by 12 rectangle. And I'm going to actually extrude this one to give it some uh, to give it some thickness. Now, that makes this top surface profile one for my loft. And I need a new work plane where I can make profile two, which, which is going to be a specific distance away from this one. So uh, I'm going to create an offset work plane. I'm going to click on that top surface, and I'm going to give myself uh, three inches of offset to my new plane. And here I can sketch my new profile, which is going to be a circle. Now, if I wanted to loft this rectangle to this circle, I can either look here under the Create menu and find the Loft tool, or I can hit S to pull up my shortcuts. I have Loft in my shortcuts, but you can also search for Loft, and you get one for surfaces and one for solids. So selecting Loft, I can pick my first profile and my second profile, and this is what we get. It blends the first profile into the second one and leaves a solid as it goes. And like our other 3D modeling tools, we can either join, we can cut, we can uh, create, we can create intersections between two, um, between two solids, or we can create new components and bodies. I'm just going to join this to my existing solid. And I'll extrude this a little bit further. So using the solid that I have here, if I were to then use the shell tool, and I were to select a couple of surfaces that I want to remove, I could then make this a hollow piece like uh, like we see in sheet metal duct work and going from a rectangle shape to a round shape is a is a pretty good application for for that. Um, there's another way that we can use the loft tool in which we can create a little bit more complex profiles. And uh, for that, we'd need several offset work planes. And in this case, when I select the loft tool, I can choose more than just two profiles. And when I do this, if I select all of them together like this, it will create a continuous blend between those profiles. And it'll sort of fill in the curves, making the edges of one connection tangential to the edges of the next, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you can create some cool, cool geometry this way. <clears throat> if I back that up a little bit, and I deselect my top surface using only a loft between the first two, and then I do a second loft between the next two, then I will get a different result. Notice the difference when I do it as two separate lofts. I get this distinct edge in, at the middle profile versus when I selected all three in the same loft and I got a continuous curve between them. So depending on the situation and what you're trying to accomplish, you might decide to do all of your profiles in one loft or select specific profiles to do as specific lofts. Now, as I already mentioned, we can use loft to cut geometry as well. So if I select this top rectangle as my um, first profile and this bottom one as my second, it senses that I'm going through a solid and it decides to make this a cut. So we can use loft to cut away material as well as join it. Loft can also work around corners. If I have a feature such as this little L bracket, 
if I have one profile on one surface and I have another profile on the other, I can create a loft between these two profiles that are not on parallel work planes. And it can join those two profiles in this way. So this is a this is a shape that could be difficult to make using other modeling methods. And for one more application, this is uh, two ends of a structural I beam that is that is not symmetrical from end to end. And uh, if I were to try to create this using something like a tapered extrusion, then the thickness of my steel would get thinner and thinner as it goes. And if I want to preserve the half inch thickness of the steel uh, at the at the top flanges and at the center eye, then I would want to create a profile at each end of my beam that has the correct thickness established. And when I use loft to join those two, I get a nice structural steel beam with the taper angle that I wanted. So there's a few different ways that you can use the loft tool. Hopefully you find that useful. Until next time, keep working. Good luck.